In EMTP, the load flow solution is another type of steady state solution. The main difference is that the load flow solution allows entering power constraints without providing lump circuit models for some generation and load devices. The lump circuit models are used in the standard steady state solution option and their parameters are determined by the load flow solution. In this example, the source and the load are provided using circuit models. No load flow is required. The time domain simulation can be started from the standard steady state solution option. Now, if the RL load is replaced by a PQ load, a load flow must be run. Let's set up the load parameters. Power and voltage dependencies can be set here. For example, for a constant power load, set NP and NQ to zero. For constant current, set NP and NQ to one. For a constant impedance load, set NP and NQ to two. To run a load flow, all ideal voltage source and impedance devices or synchronous machines must be associated with a load flow bus device. This device can be found in the sources library. Drag and drop the device and connect it to the terminal of the voltage source or the synchronous machine. Open the voltage source mask and indicate it is linked to a load flow bus. In the load flow bus, indicate it is linked to the voltage source. The source impedance data is retrieved automatically from the voltage source and impedance device. Set up the type of low flow constraint to apply and its characteristic. Network equivalencies are often represented by slack buses or infinite buses. In this case, the voltage and its angle must be entered. There must be at least one slack in the circuit to perform the load flow calculation. Our circuit is now ready for the load flow calculation. To run it, go to Simulation Options in the Simulate tab and check Find Load Flow Solution. Click on the Start button. The load flow conditions have been found. The load flow solver uses an iterative Newton method for solving its systems of equations. The number of iterations required is noted in the console. In the next video, we will show how to visualize the load flow results and to display them in the graphical user interface. The only difference between load flow and steady state calculation is in the participation of load flow devices and standard source devices. During load flow calculation, load flow devices go into the load flow solution, while the standard source devices that they are linked to are inactivated. During the steady state and time domain solutions, it is the opposite. Low flow devices are inactive and the standard source devices are activated. More information can be found in the load flow option device located in the options library. When start steady state solution from load flow solution is selected in the simulations options, the angle and magnitude of the ideal voltage source behind the impedance is automatically adjusted to match the load flow results. For loads, a RL or RC equivalent is also calculated so the steady state and time domain simulations match the load flow results. Before finishing this tutorial, let's have a look at a case with synchronous machines. Here, three synchronous machines are present. Synchronous machines are typically represented as PV load flow buses. In the synchronous machine mask, link the machine to the load flow previously connected to its terminal. In the load flow bus, select PV and link with the synchronous machine. Enter the power and voltage references according to the contingency. Limits on reactive powers can be entered. If these limits are reached during the load flow calculation, the PV bus is transformed into a PQ bus. 
The voltage phase input does not have to be provided. The value entered here will be used for the first network iteration. For the load flow calculation, one of the machines is set as the slack. After the load flow calculation, for the steady state calculation, the machines are represented by Thivian equivalencies. If start steady state solution from load flow solution is selected in the simulation options, the angle and magnitude of the Thivian source is automatically adjusted to match the load flow results. After the steady state solution is found, the field voltage and the mechanical power of each machine is calculated and used to initialize the AVR and governors for the time domain simulation. If no AVR or governor is modeled, the field voltage and mechanical power are held constant for the time domain simulation. Thank you for watching this video. If you need more information or want to get informed when new content is released, please subscribe to our LinkedIn community and to our newsletter.